All the matter in our universe is built up from tiny particles. Those particles have a few interesting properties, one of which is electric charge. A particle may have a positive charge, a negative charge, or it may be neutral, meaning it carries zero charge. When multiple particles come together, they interact in a few different ways, depending on the types of charge they carry. This video will explore and quantify some of these interactions using a fundamental law of physics, Coulomb's law. Back in 1785, three papers on electricity and magnetism were published by the physicist Charles Augustin de Coulomb. Monsieur Coulomb came from France and actually spent some time as an engineer in the French army. He had an excellent background in mathematics and experimental science, both of which he applied in the army and in the lab. Within those three papers, he detailed an experiment involving a torsion balance, which is a kind of very weak spring. The torsion balance held a rod with an electrically charged sphere at one end. By charging another sphere and holding it near the rod, Coulomb could get the first sphere to move and the rod to rotate. Using this device, he was able to investigate, in minute detail, the interactions between charged particles. Let's summarize what he discovered. It was already known that objects with the same charge repel each other. In other words, if the two objects are both positively charged or both negatively charged, they push each other apart. It was also known that objects with opposing charges, one positive and one negative, pull on each other. They experience attraction. With his special torsion balance, Coulomb learned how to measure the size of the force acting between his charged spheres. Today we call this type of force an electrostatic force. It can be repulsive or attractive, pushing or pulling. Experiments with the torsion balance showed that this force increased when larger amounts of charge were given to the spheres. More charge resulted in more attraction or repulsion. The force also increased when the two spheres were brought closer together. Doing this actually caused an exponential increase. Halving the distance resulted in four times the force. Putting all this together gave Coulomb the new law of physics that was to be named after him. It relates the electrostatic force between two particles to the amount of charge on each particle and their separation distance. The size of the force depends on the product of the two charges divided by the square of the distance between them. To make the two sides of this equation equal, Coulomb had to introduce a term called the electric constant. It's a number that never changes. It relates to one of the fundamental constants of our universe. Amazingly, he could even estimate this number using his torsion balance. It's a very big number around 8.988 billion. Over 300 years later, Coulomb's law is still an important piece of knowledge for anyone studying matter. As an equation, it allows us to quantify electrostatic interactions and solve problems involving the tiniest building blocks of matter. As a concept, it explains many aspects of the universe that we sometimes take for granted. For example, have you ever thought about why your feet don't sink through the floor? Or why solid objects feel solid even though they're made of atoms, and atoms are mostly empty space? It's all because of the charged particles that exist in every atom, specifically the electrons that whiz around their outsides. All electrons are negatively charged, so electrons in neighbouring atoms always repel each other. Since Coulomb's law is an inverse square law, this repulsion is very small when the atoms are far apart. We normally don't notice it because the forces involved are so tiny. But when those atoms with their electrons are brought next to each other, the forces between them become exponentially larger. This is what you feel 
when you take a step and your foot hits the floor. That increased electrostatic force between neighbouring electrons in the floor and your foot creates the sensation of solid ground. Without it, your foot would sink right into the floor and the atoms in your body would merge with it. If electrostatic forces didn't work the way they do, a universe that supports life would probably not be possible. For the final section of this video, I will run through a couple of calculations. As I said before, Coulomb's law can be used to precisely quantify the size of an electrostatic force applied by one charged particle to another. Let's see how to do that. In this first example, we have two positively charged particles. They both carry the same amount of charge. Let's say it's two coulombs each. That's actually quite a lot of charge, so the resulting force will be relatively large. These particles are 10 centimeters apart, or 0.1 meters. The last piece of information we need is the value of that electric constant. Feel free to pause the video now and try to make this calculation on your own. Play it again when you're ready, then I'll show you my own working. Here's my working and the final answer with appropriate rounding. As with any force, the units of measurement we use are newtons. Notice that the force is a positive number. This is what we should expect when we look at two charges that are both positive or both negative. In both cases, the electrostatic forces they generate are repulsive. Therefore, a positive electrostatic force means the particles are pushing each other apart. Let's try another example, this time with more realistic inputs. In a typical exam question, you might be asked to calculate the force between a proton and an electron, which are very small and usually very close together. A proton carries a positive charge, and an electron carries a negative charge with the same magnitude. Let's suppose they are this distance apart. Can you work through this calculation on your own? Pause the video while you give it a try. This is what I came up with. You'll notice that the force generated is a negative number in this case. The negative sign refers to the direction of the electrostatic force. It is attractive. If you've been paying attention, you would have expected this. It happened because we multiplied a positive charge with a negative charge, giving the resulting force a negative sign. Electrostatic forces between opposing charges are always attractive. Before we wrap up, I should point out some limitations of this equation. While it is an extremely useful tool for physicists and engineers, it's only meant for use in specific cases. Firstly, it only works for charges that are spherically symmetrical. That means the charges have to be shaped like perfect spheres, or they have to be point charges, which have no size at all. The minuscule particles that make up atoms can be thought of as point charges, but not big nuggets of gold. For more complex charged objects, the equation needs to be altered. Second, Coulomb's law assumes the charged particles are not moving relative to each other. In other words, they are static. This means, for example, that it isn't much use in an electronic circuit, where large amounts of charge are constantly moving in a loop. Here's a summary of everything covered in this video. I hope you found it helpful for your study. If you did, please hit the like button to show your support. You can also use the comment section below to ask questions, provide feedback, or request a topic for a future video. Finally, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. Thank you very much for watching.